briefly mention, my name is David Stoke. Uh, I'm with Jeffrey L. Bruce and Company. Uh, we're, we're based out of Kansas City. Um, and we have we also have a, a smaller office in, in Des Moines as well, West Des Moines. And we're a little bit unique uh, when it comes to uh, what we do as landscape architects. Um, we do the traditional landscape architecture of uh, design and planning, but we also really have a, a strong focus on integrated water management, green infrastructure, green roofs, uh, urban soil, and providing those specialized services to uh, larger, more national landscape architects. So we get we get the opportunity to work on really, really complex projects uh, throughout the country. Uh, so let's uh, start. We'll, we'll, I'll just give you a kind of a brief overview of who we are again. Um, so we've been in, in business since 1986. That's when Jeff founded the company. Um, and like I said before, we're one of the few practices that offers uh, full service design and technical research uh, with with regard to soils, microclimate, uh, what we call integrated water management, green infrastructure, uh, green roof technology. Um, and then on those projects, we focus on uh, engineered soils, urban soils, uh, green roof technologies, um, high performance irrigation maintenance programming and design, and then just best practices for not only installation, but managing that, maintaining it after we're done and the project is actually delivered to the client. Um, so next one here. Uh, here's a little bit about who we are. Uh, Jeff Bruce is over on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, he's the uh, principal in charge, the owner of Jeffrey L. Bruce and Company. Uh, that's, that's me on the right. Um, I don't look like that anymore. I've lost a little bit more hair. Yeah. <laughs> and the hair that I do have is turning much, much more gray. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Brian Davis is on the left. He is uh, an Auburn graduate. Uh, he, he's in our office. He's another senior project manager. Uh, on the right is Eric Becker. He is an uh, Iowa State grad, and um, he's been with us since 2007 uh, and has come along nicely. He, he now manages projects, um, and does, he's kind of the jack of all trades and does a little bit of everything. Uh, Eric Dahl is on the left on this slide. Uh, he's also from Iowa State, graduated from Iowa State. Uh, and he is actually in our Des Moines office uh, and handles a lot of our Iowa projects, but he's also heavily involved with um, some of the integrated green infrastructure projects that we're uh, implementing across the country. And then Bonnie uh, Kepke on the right-hand side, she's our office manager. Um, I'm, I'm also from Iowa State. I graduated uh, back in 98, Landscape Architecture Department. I would say there. So uh, I spent four years, about three and a half, four years in Des Moines, and I've been uh, been in Kansas City uh, with JVC ever since. Just a little bit about our culture. Uh, we, uh, whenever we take on a project, we typically like to have everybody involved. Since we're a pretty small knit group of professionals. Uh, each of us kind of has a level of expertise and knowledge in certain systems, so we like to bounce those ideas off each other. And uh, we think it's a it's it's kind of a nice model because uh, instead of having one or two people on one project, you get a chance to kind of bounce different ideas off one another with six or seven individuals on a project. Uh, our culture is definitely research driven. Um, we do a lot of testing, um, not only on sports fields, but on green roofs, uh, as well as uh, all, all types of soils testing, uh, quality control testing during construction. Um, in a few of these photos, you see uh, some of the testing we do on 
synthetic earth field surfaces, which is another aspect of our of our company. Uh, it's not the most glamorous, uh, in my estimation, but uh, we're very very good at it. And so it's uh, it's nice to have a break and and work on a project like that every now and then. So uh, we have tens of thousands of dollars of testing equipment um, from what you see in this small photograph with the laptop sitting on the ground. That is a, uh, a microscopic IPM camera. And what we do is, uh, whether it's natural or synthetic turf type of field, we will uh, get microscopic pictures of how the fibers on a synthetic turf work or how, uh, how blades of grass look at a very close range. And from that, we can tell uh, whether disease is starting to set in um, and whether or not it's low in some nutrients. Obviously, that's not, not the only thing that will determine that, but uh, it helps us kind of manage and, and uh, take a greater look in greater detail at those systems. In the lower right-hand corner, this uh, kind of stainless steel tubular thing that you see sitting on the ground, that's a, a double ring infiltrometer that uh, measures uh, infiltration rates in the soil uh, based on uh, different, uh, or I guess, gravitational poles. Um, the equipment that's in the lower left-hand corner here, a red kind of tube sticking up out of the ground there. That is a uh, impact hammer, uh, which actually measures Gmax on a, on a surface, uh, which is basically, in simple terms, it measures hardness of the surface. And uh, it gives it in a, a measurement that's called the Gmax rating, uh, which is a, it's a rating that um, college and NFL uh, Players Association used for determining um, impact of head injuries and how to measure concussion. And it, it develops metrics for how often concussions occur as it relates to the hardness of the surface. And then in the upper left-hand corner is, is a, it's a laboratory in Texas that we use for um, saturated and unsaturated micronutrient testing in soil. And then, uh, once again, we're soils nerds. Uh, so this is uh, the top two photos are of the testing lab that we use exclusively on our projects. Uh, they test all of our performance criteria, which ranges from infiltration rate, bulk density, water retention, water release, uh, pH in the soil, um, particle size evaluation, so classification of soil, uh, not only on the USDA scale, but on other scales. Um, and then on the bottom left-hand corner, um, that little device that uh, kind of has some digital numbers on it sitting on the ground there, that is a, a moisture sensor. Or actually, that's the data logger. The moisture sensor itself is that gray tube sticking up out of the ground, uh, up into the left of that. And what we what we utilize that equipment for is uh, to, uh, measuring volumetric water or volumetric moisture in the soil. Uh, this we use this specifically during installation of soil or uh, during the grow-in period of plant material, so we have a better uh, we have a better idea of how much water is in the soil and how we need to adjust our irrigation scheduling. Uh, because climate, all, all different plant material are required, they have different water needs. And so we dial that into our irrigation design. And we try to hit the sweet spot on our volumetric moisture in the soil. And the little instrument that's right up in, to the right of it is it's just a simple thermometer. And we like to also measure soil temperature because there's ideal ranges for uh, when you're talking about propagation and uh, germination of seed, if you're, if you're indeed seeding a site, whether it be 
earth feed or uh, native soil, or I'm sorry, native plant material type of seed propagation. So we'd like to have an idea of, of what those values are. And this is just kind of a fun shot of we like to not only work hard, but we like to play hard too. So um, I told you that we have an office in Kansas City. We're in North Kansas City. Uh, in our office in West Des Moines is uh, it's right in the heart of Valley Junction on Fifth Street. Uh, we're actually uh, sharing a space with KCL engineers. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful old historic building, and we're on the second floor of that building. So if you ever want to stop by, just let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, arrange for Mr. Dahl to meet, meet with you. Uh, so now I'd like to just kind of shift it to um, whenever we're uh, engaging in a project, um, a very complex project we work on, there's a number of disciplines that you need to really coordinate with and share information and documentation with. And, and those disciplines are typically the owner's representative, who is the person that's representing the client and is really the liaison between the design team and the contractor. Um, and then obviously we're, we're also uh, collaborating with uh, other landscape architects. Um, oftentimes much more larger uh, or nationally recognized uh, lead design landscape architects. Uh, we work a lot with architects, civil engineers, structural engineers, uh, mechanical electric, electrical plumbing, MEP engineers. And then uh, uh, we're really seeing an uptick in terms of even on green roofs where we're really working closely with ecologists, biologists, and arborists. Um, the design and implementation phases of a project usually start with some sort of pre-design where you want to just get a feel for the site or, or the project and try to assess the program, and not only the, the existing program, but what is proposed to be on that site in terms of program use and function. And then the standard uh, phases that we go through on a project, which really starts off with schematic design, uh, then moves into design development, which is kind of that step between uh, the more conceptual, sketchy design versus the highly technical uh, documents that you'll build upon, which, which is the construction document. Uh, and then at the end of construction document, uh, Typically, when, when we're negotiating contracts, we like to be involved in bidding and negotiation because what that does is it allows us to um, have the ability to help them, help the owner or the client select a contractor who is able to uh, deliver uh, our aspects of the scope of work. So in other words, um, you just can't get any general contractor off the street to come in and and implement our soil design, our our sophisticated irrigation system design, uh, and then all those support systems that go with it. So it, the bidding and negotiation process is very important uh, because it allows us to really develop a rapport with the owner's representative and have them feel comfortable about the contract where they're selecting. And then from there we move into construction administration, which is basically the observation and the oversight of uh, what we draw up on paper and making sure that it's being installed properly, uh, making sure that the materials that we're specifying uh, are, are consistent and in compliance with the written specification. That we uh, that we develop as part of that uh, construction package. So these are this is just more or less propaganda of what we do. We we do parks and recreation planning, water resource management, green infrastructure, uh, agronomic and soil engineering. Uh, we do sports master planning, uh, operational maintenance planning. 